Hi class, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, um, a plate using a paper plate as a mold. So it can't be a shiny plate, you were given several different plate shapes in your toolkit. A really small one, um, a more dinner sized plate, and kind of a square plate. So um, the smaller one is like a single, we didn't have that many of those and it's kind of flimsy. You probably can do a practice one in that, but only one. If you're gonna, you have to make two plates. Um, if you're gonna make a small one, only one can be small. The other must be like the round or the square. Um, so I need to grab my cutting wire and I'm going to cut off a slab of clay. This time I'm gonna use white. And there's a gaping hole in it, so I'm going to quickly wedge it up and get rid of that. And um, <coughs> you only need about, I think this is, I think I cut off about the size of a large grapefruit. And that's about what I'm going to need for the round, larger sized plate. Don't want it too thick and I really don't want it too thin. Alright, so that looks wedged up pretty good. And I'm going to start by flattening it out. There's an air bubble so I'm going to get that little sucker. And I'm going to start rolling. So I'm going to roll on my canvas, and you were all given a hunk of canvas as well. I did ask you to purchase a slab roller. Hopefully everybody did that. Now I'm rolling the clay, and I'm starting in the middle and working out. So it's a lot like rolling dough. And I'm rolling it till it's about a fourth of an inch thick. If I see an air bubble, I'm going to pop that thing because we don't want to have that. You can kind of see it like working up from the surface there. Don't want that. All right, this is looking pretty good. Not too thick, not too thin. And now I'm going to use my red rib to bring over my bucket of water. And I'm just going to get rid of that canvas texture. Alright. I usually will double up my plates so they're at least two, two ply um, when I first put it in because I don't want the rim getting weak. Clay is a lot heavier than these paper plates. If you'd like to buy your own paper plates, just make sure that they are um, completely just paper, not the shiny um, version. We use a lot of chinette. So I'm tapping that in gently. And then I'm going to come in with my sponge and I'm going to kind of smooth that. And then I'm going to come back in with my rib. And I'm really compressing that because I want the clay particles to be compressed and not as liable to um, crack apart. And that comes through compression. Oop, stabbed it a little. And I am using the round side, not the flat side. All right, now I'm going to take my needle tool and I'm going to bring that along the edge of the paper. And I'm just going to very carefully follow that paper edge. And that's just to get off the excess. I'll refine the lip in a little bit of one that's already made, but um, I want to get the extra off of there right away because we can wedge that, of course, and, and reuse it. It's much less wasteful. So just using that metal needle tool and running that along the edge. Here's a little area that's sticking out. And I'm going to take my sponge and just cradle that lip 
and round off and compress that. Even though I'm gonna be coming back and working on it later, I just want it as good as it can look. Now this needs to set up to leather hard. And so I'm gonna set that aside for here. And then I'm going to take my extra clay pieces, kind of wedge them up and put them back. You can use um, your white clay um, or your red clay, it's up to you, but you'll do different things to the surface. So this is one that I've already started and it's set up. So I'm gonna take one other piece and flip it and lift. And this is gonna show me the underside that still needs a little bit of work. And for that, I can scrape off my file and I can refine that. So I'm just using my file and taking off you know, the sharp pieces underneath that I couldn't see before. And I'm keeping them away from the clay. Now for your plate, you're going to want to put a foot on and you never want to put a round ball as a foot. They always break off. They actually don't look that good. And I'm gonna show you how to make a better foot than that. So I'm gonna take my sponge and go back over that edge Make sure that's fairly refined. All right, that's a good start. Let's scrape up my extra particles. Now, same thing would be done with a round plate like this. I would pop it off and work on that under edge. So regardless of what kind of clay you use or what kind of mold, you're still always gonna have to fix that underside. Now this is leather hard, I mean, it's truly leather hard. So I need to make some score marks and I'm really just gonna follow the edge here to create a foot. All right. If I were making a round, um, a round plate, I would probably make a round coil um, for a foot, but this, is a square plate. And I'm gonna grab some slip. But you can also mix some on the surface like I've shown you. If you have any clay that dries out and add some water to it, you can mix your own slip right at home. All right, so that's a good start. And I'm using that slip so that I don't trap air between the two sections. Now I'm going to make a couple little coils for those um, kind of corner feet that I'm making. I could have it go all the way around, but in this case I'm just going to try it this way. All right, so I'm rolling a coil, a nice consistent coil that seems to be the same thickness all the way around. And then I'm going to add that on. Seems a little long, but I'm gonna come back and adjust. Now I'm going to connect those on really well. I'm going to smooth there. And right now I'm just using my fingers. I'm going to come back in with my sponge in a bit, but right now I'm just using my fingers. And I'll probably come back with my file on this as well, just to make sure they're nice and even. Later in the semester, we'll do other things like use paper cups as patterns. And these are all things that 
a lot of times, you know, we have laying around either at home or at work or even in our cars, old coffee cups, paper cups, and it works really great as a mold because unless it's like a shiny paper, it, the clay doesn't really stick to it. It comes off pretty easily. Right now, I'm gonna use my sponge and I'm gonna make sure that's nice and smooth and rounded. And I just want to make sure the space here between these kind of lines up and looks, you know, right. And I think just for a little embellishment, I'm going to use, um, this is just a little stamp I made out of clay and I let it get rock hard. And I just used, um, uh, where is my pencil? Oh, just used a pencil and turned it around in a circle and poke some dots and it works pretty well um, to create like kind of an embellishment just in those seams make it a little bit more interesting it's not fired it's just dry so it works a little bit better when the clay is set up just a little bit but it'll work fine for this oh one more A little bit better at leather hard than this, but it'll work okay. Now, I need to let that set up. I can't just flip that over right now because it won't hold its shape. It just won't. I mean, this is really, really wet. So remember that just like when we made the mug and the bowl, we always had to let it set up before we flipped it. So I'm gonna set that aside and I'm going to take out this iron plate that I made you can see there's been some contamination with my white slip and my white hands. And this plate's pretty well um, shot now. I'm, I'm gonna have to recycle that. But this is ready to go for fixing the, the rim. So I'm gonna again get this out. Get off that edge. And I'll put a round coil foot on this. And it's okay to use like that one small, um, that small little plate as a practice. I think that's a great one to try it on and I really encourage you to do that. Why not try it on a smaller scale that's a little bit more comfortable before you try it on a larger scale. And I'm kind of going around in a circle, trying to make sure that looks right. And then I'm just gonna scrape all those extra particles away and take my damp sponge and round off that lip. All right, now for my, um, for my, Foot. I'm just going to go in about oh, just a little ways right here, maybe a half inch looks like, and I'm just scoring and making those marks again. And I can use either some water to create some slip on the surface, and that's working pretty good actually. I don't want to get it too wet, but I do want to use get a little slip moving on the surface. So remember this is called slipping and scoring. And I'm gonna rehydrate those lines and I think just one more little round. All right, let me grab some clay. I'm gonna make a long coil again, but this one's gonna go, it's gonna be round and it is gonna go all the way around. Just to show you a couple different feet. All right. Now the trick with 
this is if you can't roll a super long coil, you can do it in parts. Won't be a problem to add and piece um, some on there. And also, don't make a super flat coil. It's better to start with something rounded that's going to connect on there and not trap any air. All right. Now I'm going to come on the to the over to the plate and with the round side gently pressing that on and pull just another one little piece we'll just flatten that down where we're going to connect and then I'll just connect that on the rest of the way so remember you don't have to make it all in one piece now I'm going to pinch it downward And again, the round balls that I always see people making, those spherical shapes, I don't know why people do it. They do. Um, but they almost always break before they get through both firing processes. So make sure that you know this. You do not make those round balls. They rarely have a good survival rate. Now, I'm just kind of working that surface with my fingers to create that foot. This foot's a little high for me, but once it sets up to leather hard, whoop, little white slip. Once it sets up to leather hard, I can take my file to it and fix that. And it does take a little work, so don't like try for a couple seconds and leave it looking like this. It's, you're not going to be happy, and I'm really not going to be happy when I grade it either. Take your time and work on refining it. I'm using my sponge now, kind of getting rid of the extra slip and the slop. Then I can bend that over the, the rim and kind of straighten that out. If you have like a weak spot, you'll be able to add some on there if you need to, like right here. It seems like I have like a little weird thin area and I can add a little piece on. I don't really know that I need to but I could. Because when I come back, once this gets to leather hard and I come back with the file, I can file that down and have that um, nice and even. Just usually at the very top of it's lumpy and not refined. But this is too wet. I shouldn't be doing this now, but just to show you that the file would eventually take this down and refine it. I would again have to let this set up before I turn it over. Another thing that I could do with this foot is very carefully scallop it. make just a slightly you know variation of this and just make sure those edges are smooth so that would work as well. Now I'm going to just take a look at this make sure it's holding its own shape. I do have a lot of white slip on this by accident which takes away from the beautiful color of the clay, but I'm just thinking that I could possibly use a, another stamp on the edge to create some birds going around. Hmm, maybe it's a little dry. That one worked a little better. So I can kind of do something like stamp around the side before I, um, while I let this set up, and then I'll apply a slip, and then I can carve through it. Going back to this plate here. This still needs to set up a bit, but I um, wanted to talk just for a second about the design 
um, on the inside and you can see I've started kind of sketching on um, the start of a flower pattern and um, so if you're not sure if you're like afraid of freehanding it and you think I don't know about this you can simply sketch it on first and that's going to give you like more of a template to work on and you can just brush away the little particles. I'm just very very gently starting to sketch that on so that I can create a pattern around this flower. You don't have to do a flower but I'm just saying um, in terms of being able to decorate it with underglazes sometimes it's nice to have a template um, to start with or to cut some paper shapes out to trace around and use as a stencil. Those are all possibilities for decorating these plates. Okay, the foot, the foot is important so that um, when we glaze it, we can glaze to the bottom, leaving just the foot area bare of, of glaze. And um, how you decide to do that is up to you, but um, no doing the three balls stuck on the bottom. That is not going to work well. All right, have fun with the plates. Think about how you could alter the lip, um, the foot, the decoration, um, maybe the red clay with the white slip on it carved through the sgraffito that we learned about earlier in the semester. Um, you could use the white clay and paint with underglaze on top and play around with sgraffito there as well. It's up to you, but you do need to, um, on the very bottom, write your name and you will have to carve your name and then um, choose which glaze um, that you've been introduced to so far that you would like on top of it. Thank you.